So who am I? I started using Linux about 97, so I'm a late bloomer. I started writing on Linux in 2002, senior editor for a few publications, eWeek Internet News, Server Watch, Enterprise Networking Planet, and I run a small site called uh, linuxtoday.com, and I recommend anybody uh, that's interested in Linux to submit, look, and see what we have going on there. Uh, in the beginning, the first time I met Jim Zenlin, the executive director of the Linux Foundation, was back in 2006 in Toronto at a small event called Linux World Canada, long since gone. At the time, he was the uh, leader of a group called the Free Standards Group. Uh, at the time, in 2006, he was speaking about fighting Linux fragmentation. The Free Standards Group was driven by an effort called the Linux Standards Base, which was an API and a set of baseline things that would enable uh, software developers to target Linux as a platform as opposed to just individual Linux uh, distributions. The theory was that uh, Unix broke apart because of uh, fragmentation and the whole idea was he was trying to prevent that with the free standards group. What he said at the time in this uh, session in 2006 was that open source is a development methodology, choice is not guaranteed by that and you could still get locked in and that was what the Free Standards Group is all about. There was a rival group at the time called the Open Source Development Labs, and they uh, were the home of uh, Linus Torvalds at the time, and they ran into financial trouble in 2006, uh, running out of money. January 2007, the Linux Foundation was formed as a merger uh, or a buyout of the OSDL and the Free Software uh, Group. It started out with about 70 members. Uh, the Linux Foundation at the time defined itself as the new center of gravity for Linux, uh, because OSDL was the center of gravity for Linux, and as all engineers know, you cannot change the laws of physics. I don't do a good Scottish accent. And physics, uh, gravity always pulls things in. Uh, this is the first tax return, because I'm a journalist, so I have to hunt for turn, returns and numbers. Uh, that the Linux Foundation filed 2007, about 7.5 million. This is just after uh, the OSDL was pretty much done. At the time, a couple years later, uh, Jim said in the Collaboration Summit 2009, one of the first events, was that the role of the Linux Foundation was about standardizing, promoting, and protecting Linux by focusing on those goals uh, could advance Linux and ultimately the OS market. Uh, skip ahead a couple years, 2011, that's the last time LinuxCon, that's the predecessor event for this event, was here in Vancouver. And Jim said, uh, the lesson of Linux is that Linux is on the right side of history. Expect that you will hear him say that again tomorrow. You heard that here first, because he said that many times in the seven years since. 2012, he talked a little bit about competition, that the competition needs to embrace open source and keep up. Uh, and here we are, 2018, and Microsoft has listened to him. Uh, Jim has said the Linux is awesome more than once, uh, in particular in 2013, and I think that was a particularly great year. That was the year that Steam decided to embrace Linux, and for all you gamers out there, that was fantastic. In 2013, there was a big shift. That's when the Linux Foundation uh, started to be about a whole lot more than just Linux. Open Daylight Project started, that's a, a first of a collaboration projects, and was, uh, is a networking effort. Uh, Jim at the time said that Open Daylight relies on this essential organizational framework, and this is what the Linux Foundation can help to provide. Uh, in the time since that uh, Open Daylight started, there's been a whole lot of other projects, and this is just a few, and there's more, that the uh, Linux Foundation has added. Uh, so many so that in 2014, Jim said that he's just Linus Torvald's janitor. I mean, he just cleans up and makes sure that the place is a good place for people to do development work, which is really what the Linux Foundation is all about. By 2015, there was already conversations, maybe the Linux Foundation should be renamed. Uh, Jim said no, because Linux has a brand name and a reputation. By 2016, he was already talking about sharing and altruistic goals, how it makes the world a better place. And as everybody knows, 2017 was the year of the Linux desktop. No other year previous or, or, or future will be, and that was that. Uh, there is no resistance. We will all be assimilated, and that is what it's going to be. Fundamentally, the real question that the Linux Foundation asks, Jim always says, is which are the projects that really matters? Which are the ones that will provide security, agility, uh, and that will meet these requirements? And the thing that you have to have is sustainable ecosystems, and that's what the Linux Foundation provides. In the 10 seconds I've got less, the Linux Foundation has grown from the ashes of the OSDL and the promise of the free software group. It's grown from 70 members, grown to many open source projects, also grown from 7.5 million to about 61 million in 2016. Linux is awesome. Thank you.